Hey guys, so we are talking about global feminism this week, and I must say that I found it very interesting, and it opened my eyes to what I define and how I define the term woman and um, feminism and how they intersect with each other. So, for our two readings, um which we had Under Western Eyes from Chandra Mahanti, and then we had Conceptualizing Gender. I'm not going to butcher the first name. Last name was Oyuami, I'm assuming. So I really liked um, both of those, and that um, Chandra Mahanti really had me, you know, take a look at, you know, like, how I was brought up and, you know, how... I felt that feminism was simply, you know, because I, I live with what well, I grew up with. My mom and dad is just me. I'm the only child. So it really opened my eyes to, you know, look back on how I seen my mom act as a wife, as a mother, and how that determined my de definition as a woman, um, which she also talked about um, nuclear families, which ties with us and um that really opened my eyes to that and really kind of changed my thoughts on that because of the simple fact that women from different parts of the world different countries different cultures have different definitions of the term woman some people may think a woman is a woman because of this and some people may think that that doesn't define a person as a woman just because they do so so um, it really helped broaden my definition of woman and um, feminism as well for conceptualizing gender by Oyuwami that's what I'm gonna keep it at <laughs> um, I like how she um, stood up there and said how we use our gender to account for um, oppression worldwide. Like, if you were a woman, like, you just, I guess you just had to be oppressed, which um, is how a lot of people look at it. And when they think of feminism, they think um, oppression, basically. The TED Talk. I absolutely love, like, I have, like, that's a good thing, and then, like, one thing I noticed, like, when you look up the videos, um, and then they have, like, the little sides with other TED Talks, uh, like, I'm gonna look more into those, because those are very interesting. So, TED Talk, How Islam Made Me a Feminist, by Zina Aga, I'm guessing, that was, um, very eye-opening, I like the fact that she stated that um, she is, um, like, us as women are not being oppressed, but we are basically oppressing ourselves. And she stated how, um, you know, being a woman is not always ideal. She used the example of um, her mom being a single mother which, of course, is not ideal, but she did it with dignity. And I think she used a lot of uplifting words and a, a lot of mm -hmm. uplifting gestures and sat up there and, you know, use a positive spin on things. When women talk about feminism, usually they talk about being oppressed and what they weren't able to do and all these other things. But she talked about how, you know, she learned to respect how she, you know, worships and, you know, how she is very happy with herself because she has adopted feminism. So I really like the fact that she talked about becoming one, like being together. And she said one way to end patriarchy is to inspire other women instead of, you know, um, diversing ourselves, unifying ourselves, coming together to make things equal to end patriarchy, to end this patriarchal society that we're in. So I really like the fact that she um, said we need to start inspiring each other, which I think is totally true, especially nowadays, because it's, it's getting really bad.
in my opinion. <laughs> so, I really like the TED Talk, and I really like the readings. And um, the TED Talk also kind of took me back to the My Period poem when um, she talked about being strong and being a woman and how she said that women who bleed are warriors. So with the strength that she talked about in the My Period poem and the strength and dignity that she talked about that her mom had, that she had gained, that she had learned in the TED Talk from Zena, I kind of linked those two together. And um, I kind of, like, I kind of got together with both of them. So I really agree with both of them, and I like how uplifting they are. So those were good. I really, um, like I said, I really enjoyed the readings, and it really helped me better understand because we all think we're one, and every woman is oppressed, and every woman is oppressed the same way, and every woman is a woman because of being able to have babies and, you know, just different definitions that people came about that a lot of people don't agree with. So that was a really um, big eye-opener for me. So for my hangout, yeah, I'm still working on that. Um, I haven't got feedback from Anna or Steven yet. I don't know why. I was looking for a little help. <laughs> no, I'm sure they will, though. They've been great so far. But, um, yeah, I just had a few questions on that. Um, I'm actually kind of doing it by myself right now because of my work schedule and how it conflicts with um, the Google Hangouts in the group. So, looking forward to communicating more with Anna or Steven to get more clarification on things so it can be helpful and they can be helpful to me and I can be helpful to myself and them. So for my Praxis project, uh, still going. Um, my toes are pink right now. They look, they look kind of, I don't know. My heel is kind of getting rough at the bottom. I'll tell you that. Even though I take a shower and put baby oil on them all the time, so I'm looking forward to getting a pedicure. I'm not gonna lie. I, I am looking forward to it. <laughs> I leave to go out of town in um, in a couple weeks, so we shall see how this goes because I can't not wear sandals because it's going to be super, super hot. So, wish me luck, okay? Make sure, hopefully, a lot of people won't pay attention to my feet or something or they won't have bad comments towards me. <laughs> okay, and then my annotated bibliography. I'm still trying to get clarification on how I want to do things. Um, I am basically trying to focus on lesbian feminism and the different images that lesbians have, like those who um, may not dress as feminine and may think they dress masculine, and I'm looking into seeing what and force them to dress that kind of way and what do they find attractive as a woman and um, what have they heard from like guy friends or other guys on what is attractive to women such as like getting a pedicure like my practice project like you know like how do you feel about a woman who doesn't get pedicures how do you feel about a woman who may have crusty feet I'm just saying but yeah so I'm going to do more research on that. I'm looking to get a little feedback from Steven and Anna on an idea that I have and clarification on things. So hopefully I'm looking to get that soon, get that started. And for my story, I was watching Fresh Prince of Bel-Air the other day. And for those who know the show, that's with Will Smith. And um, Ashley, who is like the teenage daughter, she's growing up and stuff, and she wants to be a model, and she, um, an uh, opportunity came to her for uh, modeling in a swimsuit for a commercial, and her dad automatically was like, no, like, just up and no, like, Will Smith was like, no, and he's like the cousin, not that he has much say so, but Will was like, no, the dad was like, no, the mom, she didn't really... <sighs> 
care. She didn't see anything wrong with it, but the um dad did. So he was like, no, and she's like, I'm just playing volleyball and my swimsuit. And she's like, I do it all the time. So I think the fact that her dad knew that she was going to be modeling in this commercial where millions and millions of men could see her and, you know, look at her as the sex symbol really bothered him. So I thought that was interesting because just to see how the mind of a man come about when, you know, they think of their child or they think of another, another woman posing in a swimsuit when, honestly, like, in my opinion, swimsuits are just um, swimsuits. Like, I mean, everybody wears them. Um, you go to the beach, you go to the pool with your kids, like, family day, swimsuits, you know? So it really was an eye-opener to me as to see how um, how men objectify women basically, and how a lot of men see them as just an object, a sex symbol, and, you know, try to take advantage of that, so I really enjoyed that episode, it was actually kind of funny too as well, so that was my story for the week, guys, and um, as always, have a good, safe, and blessed weekend, and I'll see you guys soon, sorry for the long video.